thank you everybody for coming, for taking time out of your own Saturday to be here and to, to rally for such an important cause. Some of you know that I was born and raised in Israel. I renounced my Israeli citizenship in 2001 as soon as I started to really grasp. As soon as I started to understand Israel's history and the history of the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. Although I was always on the left side of politics in Israel, I was by no means critical of Zionism and I didn't understand the Palestinian-Israeli conflict at all. I was a typical Israeli, a product of Israel's education system, its national scale brainwashing and the lies it feeds, it feeds its children about the country's history. I'm speaking here today not really knowing what to say. What can anyone say in the face of such blatant carnage? What can anyone say in the face of such audacity that allows Israel to use the ludicrous excuse of self-defense while committing ethnic cleansing in broad daylight? Are words useful to the hundreds who have been killed? The children who are never given a chance? The parents who, if they manage to stay alive, will somehow have to continue and live after all of that? What words can I say that can offer anything to the people of Gaza and to the Palestinians who have been scattered through or to all the corners of the globe because the Jewish people, my people, were determined to have an ethnically pure state? Can words stop a ruthless, heartless and bloodthirsty government, and I hope they hear me behind there, that still has the nerve to hide behind the pretense of victimhood and self-defense? The truth is that I would really like to be there in Gaza to help, to do something practical and also to look in the eyes of Israeli soldiers or more accurately, war criminals. It chills me to think that some of these might be people that I went to school with. In July 2006, just over two years ago, I wrote an article that got published in Electronic Intifada and in it it's, I said, I and others have warned the world repeatedly that there is nothing to expect from Israel other than more violence, more aggression, more oppression and more bloodshed. All we can expect is for Israel to continue to go around and around in circles and in the process continue to destroy, kill, maim and traumatize. All I can say is I told them so. Judaism, yes. Israel, no. Judaism, yes. Israel, no. Back then, I knew that unless the world forces Israel to end the occupation, something like what we see now in Gaza was bound to happen. Israel needs war, and it needs enemies to keep going. It is a sick, psychotic society that barely holds together. The only thing that brings Israelis together, and they know it, is the feeling that they are under threat. And there is nothing that generates that more than a good war. But what we are seeing in Gaza is not war. War is between more or less equal armies. This is a massacre. Israel has already set its eyes on Iran. And the world on the street and the word on the street in Israel is that an attack on Iran is imminent. Israel is dragging out this attack on Gaza partly in an attempt to get a reaction from Iran that it can then use as an excuse to attack. I am not surprised that 81% of Israelis are behind their government. Over the years, people have tried to tell me that it is not the ordinary Israeli that is the problem, but the government. This may be true in some countries, but not in Israel. All Israelis, men and women, are soldiers at one time or another in their lives. The 10,000 soldiers that the Israeli government mobilized for the ground attack in Gaza are ordinary Israelis who are doing their miluim in Hebrew, that's reserve service. Israel's military is not made up of mercenaries or career soldiers. The bulk of it is made up of Israeli public, of the Israeli public. No Israeli should later be allowed to hide behind the excuse of, but I didn't know. With the small exception of the courageous and unspoken anti-Zionist peace activists in Israel and the conscientious objectors who go to jail rather than commit Israel's war crimes, I hold every Israeli accountable for the war crimes in Gaza and for the crimes committed since 1948. Israelis do not think of Palestinians as human beings. I'm really sad to say that, but it's the truth. They are nothing to them. Don't think for a moment that children are killed by accident, just caught between the shells and the bullets. Israelis kill Palestinian children 
because they think of them as future terrorists and because they want to destroy any hope that the Palestinians might have for their future and the future always is with the children. Israelis are ruthless killers and trying to appeal to their humanity is like trying to negotiate with a shark. There is no point wasting time on negotiation, there is no one to talk to, Israeli society is insane. If it can't stop itself, it has to be forced to stop. The occupation must end. The Palestinians must be given a right of return. Israel does not have, and I'm saying this as a former Israeli, my entire family is in Israel, and I say, Israel does not have a moral or political right to exist as an ethnically pure Jewish state, certainly not at the expense of another people. The world has been very patient, too patient, at the cost of so many Palestinians' lives, Palestinian lives, complicit in buying into the Israeli poor me rhetoric. There is no symmetry between Israel and the Palestinians, no matter how you twist the fact. Israel is an armed, unscrupulous and dangerous country with nuclear capabilities and a psychotic and perpetual need for war. The Palestinians are a people fighting desperately for freedom from oppression. They will not win this struggle for freedom without our help. We must continue to protest and we must expand the protest and not stop until the world finally imposes a decisive economic and political boycott on the rogue racist and genocidal state of Israel. I would like to conclude with the words of Dorothy Naor, who is a 77-year-old anti-Zionist peace activist in Israel. She's an Israeli woman. On Tuesday, the, and everything I'm going to say from now on is her words. On Tuesday, the 6th of January, she wrote the following. It is with a heavy heart that I write these past days, and today heavier than ever. So many people killed, so many with no place to run away to, like sheep to the slaughter. And the world just talks. No leader proposes sanctions on Israel, and George Bush, as usual, shows that he is what an idiot he is. Yeah. By fully supporting Israel. Unfortunately, he still rules the roost for another 10 days or so. And I fear that Obama might not be much better. We yet to see what Obama brings. It is as a human being that I'm pained at the harm, the evil perpetrated on other human beings. I am pained by the ignorance and greed that allows this to happen. The ignorance of the larger part of the Israeli population, the greed, meanness and evil of Israel's leaders. She continues to say, Dorothy, Israel's leaders are shooting themselves in the foot. They are distancing diaspora Jews from Israel. That guarantees that Israel as it is today will eventually go down the drain because it needs Jews to survive. For me, the demise could not happen fast enough, she says. Not only because of what Israel has done and is doing to Palestinians, but also because this is a country that eats its children. God did not allow Abraham to sacrifice his only son, but Israel's parents gleefully sacrificed their children, and for what? They send them off to war and sacrifice them on the altar of their leaders' greed for stealing more Palestinian land and eradicating more Palestinians from this earth. These brave words come from within Israel. They know. The people that go into politics in Israel are mediocre. They do not understand human nature. They do not care that Israel excels in killing. They are experts in lying, no better than Joseph Goebbels was. They should remember, however, the conditions that Hitler left, in, left Germany in. All their lies, their use of force, all their military might will not bring security to a single Israeli. And Dorothy concludes, the only hope that we have to live here in peace and security is to replace the kind of Zionist entity that Israel is with a single democratic state with equal rights for everyone and may it happen soon. Thank you for your patience. No, no, we've got more Thank you, Abigail. Uh,